everyone and welcome back to the Breakdown Tech. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to choose the perfect graphics card for your gaming PC. Now before we get on to this video, I want to remind you it's brought to you by Amazon. You can go to the breakdown.xyz slash Amazon GPUs. First link down below to get an awesome graphics card on Amazon. The great thing I love about Amazon, by the way, is their returns. I've never had any issues returning any PC parts to Amazon. So if you do get something that's messed up, they take care of it. That's a thumbs up for me and I absolutely love them. Additionally, if you do decide to go purchase through the link down below, it helps support the channel. It's a win, 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 guys. So anyway, let's get on into the video. So step one to buying a GPU for your system is figuring out your budget. Look and see how much money you can spend on a graphics card. Then go over to PC Part Picker, linked down below, and set a graphics card for your system. Then filter that to the budget you can spend. Let's say you could spend $400. You would go in there and filter it for $400 probably between $250 and $400 and see what kind of graphics cards come up. Obviously, the more expensive the graphics card you buy, the better performance you're probably going to get most of the time. As long as you're doing generational jumps, let's say a 1060 versus a 1070 Ti, you're going to get much better performance out of a 1070 Ti. However, if you're looking at different 1070 Ti's, most expensive does not necessarily mean best. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But once you've found those, go over to another link down below, the third one, and that is going to be the bottlenecker and that sounds really weird but basically what it will allow you to do is enter every single part of your PC other than like the case but every single part that matters in your PC and let you run it to see where the bottlenecks at see where the issues at I recommend taking the graphics cards that fit in your budget take like the top five and run them on the bottlenecker and see which one works out the best the one with zero bottlenecking is most likely the one you want to go with but what if there's multiple ones with zero bottlenecks Necking. Well, if that's the case, get the one with the most CUDA cores if you're going NVIDIA or shaders if you're going AMD. And then if that's not possible, well then what do you do? Well, you look at clock speed and that's a big thing we're going to be talking about more here in a second. But clock speed is going to allow you to see which one is clocked higher versus lower. And typically spending a little bit more money for extra clock speed is a good thing. But don't spend more than like 50 bucks on it. You're losing money for that extra clock speed otherwise. I mean, typically inside of a generation like a 1070 Ti to another 1070 Ti, the clock speed is not going to matter too much. So with that, hopefully you've been able to narrow it down to the general type of GPU you want. And now it's time to move on to step three, choosing your manufacturer. Now there are tons of people who make GPUs, everyone from MSI and ASUS to EVGA and FX. There are tons and tons of GPU manufacturers out there. How do you choose one? Well, this is where we start looking and making sure that they all have DDR5 RAM for for example, if you're looking at a modern card, if you're looking at a really old card, or if you're watching this in the future, it might be DDR4. If you're looking at older cards, or DDR6. If you're looking at new brand spanking new in the future cards. But at the time of this video, you want to make sure it has GDDR5 RAM. You want to go with the one with the most RAM. And then on top of that, you want to go with the one with the highest clock speed. Now again, don't blow your budget for this, guys. But you want to look at what the difference between the base clock is and the boosted clock speed is, and then go with the one who has the best overall, looking at base clock and then boosted clock there as well. Just because one has a 2.8 boost clock and like a 1.8 base clock doesn't mean it's better than the one that has a 1.82 base clock and a 2.6 boost clock. You just have to kind of ask yourself what you're going to be doing with the system. If you're going to be doing tons of resource intensive stuff, it might be better to have one that boosts higher. But if not, it might be better to have one that's base clock is higher. So consider your use case there and if you have any questions, post them in the comment section down below. Now step five is pretty important. You've selected your graphics card, but will it fit in your system? Because if it won't, that's an issue. Let's say you picked a huge three fan graphics card. That is not going to fit in a micro ATX case. And heck, a two fan graphics card might not fit in a micro ATX case. And if that is the case, then go back to the beginning of this, go back to the drawing board and find GPUs that will fit inside your case within your budget check them on the bottlenecker, go back through the entire process. But you might be asking, Nick, why didn't you do this first? Because you kind of have to pick a GPU before you'll know if that GPU will fit into your system. PC Part Picker, if you have your entire system built over there, should account for this for you, but it is something worth noting here. And once you've done that, you should have found your GPU. Now, if you do have any questions, post them in the comment section down below. I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions that you have. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you 
you haven't already, we make incredible videos just like this every single day of the week. My name is Nick, this has been The Breakdown, and I am out, guys. Peace.